Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today we're going to be talking about some monster romances. This is my third monster romance rec video. And can you, can you tell I love monster romances? This is my third one. Like, I'm in love with them. So be sure to go check out the other two videos that I've made. They'll be linked down below. And this is actually a collaboration with Hannah Blackwell. So be sure to go check out her channel and her video down below for even more recommendations. We really connect over monster romances. So I am so excited, so excited to see her video and see what she recommends. So without further ado, let's get into these monster romances. Again, for me personally, I, don't consider alien romances to be monster romances. Just me and my brain, that's how I recommend these books. So these are not alien romances. I know alien romances have monster creatures as aliens, but for me, those are alien romances. These are entirely different. These are monster romances. So um, for me, they're like different. <laughs> so um, if you're wanting more like aliens that are monster creatures, like be sure to go check out my alien romance rec videos. I have quite a few of those on my channel as well. First one that I have to mention is Wed to the Ice Giants by Layla Fay. I read this one recently for the novella-a-thon and oh my gosh, I loved it. I think it was my only five-star read that entire read-a-thon. I was obsessed with this book. Lucy is a woman living on earth and she applies to be a part of this genetic matchmaking program that you'll like be match made to like your perfect match but uh, they're like monster creatures. She gets matched to this ice giant named Aldrig, whom she's initially very intimidated by because he, he's, he's a giant, you know, he's huge and she's a petite human woman. So there's a significant size difference between the two of them. So if you love a good monster romance with size difference, like look no further, please. <laughs> right from the get-go when Aldrig sees Lucy, like he knows that this woman is his and he's gonna do everything to woo her and to show her that she is like everything to him. I really could not put this novella down when I was reading it. I really liked the plot, the characters, like it was so interesting to me and like the size difference got me. Like, mm, it's so good, really good. <laughs> there is a trigger warning in here for attempted essay, not from the hero. So just be aware of that before you dive into this one. Next I have Tentacles and Triathlons by Ashley Bennett. This is the second book in her Leviathan Fitness series. I think I've recommended book one in the series, um, which is Muscles and Monsters. This series is set on earth with humans, but it's as if like monsters also cohabitate, you know, with humans. This one is about Cyrus and Reese. So Reese in here is our human man and he is the brother to Tegan from book one, the human woman from book one. He doesn't have the best relationship with monsters. He was traumatized by one when he was a child so he kind of like has that fear mentality with them but he really wants to like overcome that fear because his sister is marrying a monster. He ends up going to his one of his sister's like engagement parties I think and there he meets Atlas, the hero from book one, his friend um, Cyrus, who happens to be a Kraken. And from the moment that Cyrus sees Reese, he knows that that's his fate to mate, but he doesn't want to scare Reese off, so he doesn't say anything. Reese is right now training for a triathlon, and part of the triathlon is swimming, and he's not the best swimmer. So he asks um, Cyrus to help him become a better swimmer because. Cyrus is a Kraken and he spends a lot of the time in the pool and thus starts their relationship. The more time they spend together, the more time they train together, the more they get to know one another. That's when they fall in love. Like Cyrus is smitten right from the get-go because he knows that's his fated mate, but he doesn't want to scare Reese off obviously. So he's just being very patient with him and letting Reese go at his own speed. Next is an office romance, if you can believe it, okay? This is The Orc from the Office by Kate Pryor. Yes, we have a monster workplace romance. This book starts out with a meet cute kind of disaster of sorts. So this is the romance between Janice and Kent and they both work at this company. I could not tell you for the life of me what the company is or what it's about. Um, but Janice basically works at this company and Kent is walking by one day. He works for the IT department and he sees Janice is struggling trying to open this filing cabinet. And he's like, you know what? Let me help you. Like, it looks like you're having a rough time. Janice is like trying to pull the cabinet. And she's like, oh no, it's fine. Like I can do it but her hand slips and she basically accidentally elbows this man, this orc man in the nose, like on accident. And his nose is like gushing blood and everything. And little does Janice know that um, with orc tradition and orc mates, like when you get mated to somebody, if you're an orc, like 
like the your fated mate draws your blood like draws blood like makes you bleed in some way and so then starts like his mating bond to spark and that sparks her to feel the mating bond as well like I thought that was really interesting because you don't really see a lot of humans who also feel the effects of the mating bond but man they both get like immediately like they're like I have to leave because they get very hot and heavy and they're like what is going on um and so <laughs> they like have this whole accident that happens and they figure out oh uh I didn't know that would spark that and then HR steps in and is like um oh we gotta figure this out <laughs> so um it gets a little complicated um but the two of them try to let the mate bond part kind of fizzle out on its own you know like they try and like do that because they don't want to complicate their work relationship but they obviously fall in love with each other duh <laughs> this one was really interesting because it has more of like a contemporary setting that like we're used to so next i have a novella um it's actually a part of the monsters in love anthology like it's a monster romance anthology but i got an arc for um the Stone and the Star by Jillian Graves. I'm on her ARC team. So I got an ARC from her novella, Jillian Graves' novella, a part of this anthology. And I really, really enjoyed this one. So this is a gargoyle romance. That's like the monster part. So Astra in here is having a grand old time with herself, okay, in front of this window. And little does she know that the building next door that has like gargoyles, creature, statues um, next to it, uh, that they're actually like real gargoyles <laughs> and our hero in here just happens to be one of those gargoyles and he's watching Astra doing these things and is like gripping the stone so hard like trying with all of his might to not fly over there and like take this woman as his so now that he's glimpsed her though he's not gonna let her go he kind of like starts stalking her to a point and oh that's all I want to say because it is a novella so I don't want to spoil anything this was such a joy to read like the spice the plot line like I, after I finished this book, I didn't even realize that it was a novella. I was like, it was so good and so like complex and dynamic. I really enjoyed this. Next, I have Little Slice of Hell by Cleo Evans. This is the first book in her Creature Cafe series. It's about like um, this whole overarching series. You have this barista. He's like the character on the front of the book. Um, you have this barista who works at this Creature Cafe and he is very notoriously known for matchmaking. He's a very grumpy man, but like He's very good at matchmaking like monsters together or monsters with humans. So Dante in here is a monster creature and he goes to the barista to ask him to finally find his fated mate. And the barista matches him up with a human. And right when Dante sees Peter, he knows that Peter is his. He is like all in and Peter is a little bit more hesitant um, because he's been hurt in the past. So um, man, like when they first start their relationship, it's very explosive. And Dante is smitten right from the get-go. So I love me a good sin hero. Whew. One of my favorite ones that I read recently is Sweet Vengeance by um, Viano Onimo. I'm so sorry if I'm butchering that. Joy is our heroine in here and she decides to summon a demon in order to get revenge on a man that hurt her in like the most possible way. Malachi ends up answering her call and becomes her demon and is going to help her with her vengeance. He finds that her vengeance like excites him to like the utmost degree. Like he is so turned on by how vengeful this woman is. Like, whew, he's so turned on by it. These two were not expecting to fall in love with each other literally whatsoever, but I loved their relationship and how it developed. They're like, like less than hundred pages. No, less than 200 pages, I'm so sorry. Malachi is this very dominant monster, but becomes an absolute like puddle. For this human woman and I just love joy in here she completely like learns to become herself and stand on her own and becomes like a beautiful confident woman trigger warnings in here for SA murder stalking nightmares and panic attacks next I have monsters bride by RK Pierce Arissa is our human woman in this fantasy realm and she is forced to marry um, someone from like a prince from her rival, like her kingdom's rival. His name is Nor and he's prince of the Minotaur kingdom. And Nor is not happy like at all that he's going to have to marry this human woman. But he has to marry her in order to receive like his titled birthright. So like he's stuck in this situation. So they have to get married despite like not liking each other whatsoever. At first, it's kind of like Radiance by Greeks Driven, but flipped 
to where like they're not friends at first whatsoever when they first meet like they despise one another okay i did really enjoy the beginning of this book i thought it was very dynamic the end kind of fizzled out for me personally i gave this a 3.5 star but i do know that some of my friends actually really 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 enjoyed this one so if this does pique your fancy by all means pick it up obviously then i did read a lady of rook's grave manor i finally read it everyone's been telling me to read it so i have to put it in a monster romance rec video it's not my favorite thing in the world i gave it like a 3.5 star rating like it was okay but i know that people adore this book so it has to be in a rec video like rec videos aren't just for me you know so um this is a monster romance obviously esther is our heroine in this book and um she starts working at this house to be with monster creatures and she ends up with like five guys i think that are all different monsters and it's a why choose romance this book basically solidified that why choose romance is just aren't for me and that's okay that's okay i'm just done <laughs> i'm done with why choose romances plot line in here was super interesting i really enjoyed that part of it i really enjoyed the characters as individuals but i didn't get the reason as to why all of these guys were with this one woman when like I much would have rather like had individual books about each of these guys with one woman you know what I mean um just personal preference of mine I guess I felt like I just like I wanted more about all the characters and we didn't get that because there were so many of them but I know that so many of my friends adore this book so if if, if you want to read it go on ahead I'm probably a minority on the bunch when I didn't like love it like it was a good book I gave it 3.5 stars like it was a good read Catherine Moon is an amazing writer okay but like there are some things I didn't necessarily love about this book, but I'm still going to recommend it because I know that so many of my friends love this one. The last two books that I have to mention are actually like more holiday reads. Um, I'm the type of person that can read a holiday book at like any time in the year. Um, but if you're not like me, be sure to write these books down so you can read them during the holiday season. First, I have Chimera for Christmas by Ursa Dax. I've heard really good things about Ursa Dax. I need to read more of her like alien romances. Sophie is a human woman who gets hired to work at... A seasonal job for at this space station that is like themed around Christmas like it's so cute I wish this like space station actually existed I want to go there so badly so she gets hired at this coffee shop and there she meets her burly grumpy co-worker who happens to be a chimera she's like utterly smitten by him the moment that she sees him <laughs> like it's so cute his name is x and at first he's a little bit annoyed by this chatterbox of a woman like she just babbles all day long because she is crushing on him hardcore um but once he gets to know her like he is totally falling for her like he totally falls for her like it's a really good christmas read i really enjoyed it and then the other holiday centered one is dear monster claws by Maeve black oh this one is a really good one. If another cute but hot read, whew, this bad boy will be that. This is basically a grumpy sunshine romance between Cupid and Santa. So like both of them are like monster creatures in a sense, but like the heroine here who's Cupid, like she's not really a monster. She just is like, she's a human that has pink skin basically. And she has like magical powers. But our Santa Claus in here looks like this devil creature on the cover. Um, and he has more of the monster qualities. Anyway, so our heroine here, she really wants to find love, um, but Cupid's, the Cupid's themselves, like, don't find love. Like, like they find love for other people, not themselves. So she writes a letter to Santa and is like, all for all I want for Christmas this year is to find the love of my life and to fall in love. And <laughs> our heroine here, who is Santa, is like, hmm, this woman seems to have a lot of Christmas cheer. And um, I really want to help her out. So he travels to where she's staying in this sm small snowy village. He's like, okay, let's strike up this deal. I will help you find love and kind of like give you love lessons, if you will. Um, if you help me get some Christmas spirit back into me because he's not feeling very jolly this holiday season. This one was so stinking cute, but so hot. Like, oh my gosh, this one is really good. I'll tell you a quote in here that'll just like, leave you itching to go read this one. The heroine in here is talking about the hero and she says, there's a part of me that wants to sink into his skin and stay there forever. Like, yes, 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 yes. Anyway, so you have it. Those were 10 monster romances for you. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you want more recommendations, be sure to go check out Hannah's video and uh, my past videos if you haven't seen those. If you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me like the, the, um, like purple devil monster emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.